Hello, my name is Luke Millam and I'm going to talk to you today about angina. Now, we all know how a healthy heart functions. Blood flows from the right atrium to the right ventricle, out to the lungs where carbon dioxide is exchanged for oxygen, flows back into the heart, left atrium to the left ventricle, and out the aorta to the body's tissues. Now, one of the tissues that the body flows to is in fact itself, and this is where angina occurs. Now, angina is not to be confused for a heart attack. It is the precursor for a heart attack. And it's simply the chest pain caused by blood flow, lessened blood flow to the heart's tissues. And this can occur in the neck, the pain occurs in the neck, the chest, and the lower abdomen. Now, there are many subtypes, but three main types of angina with different levels of severity. The first type we have is stable or exertional angina. And this is the most common type with about 90% of cases. Now this is usually attributed to poor health choices such as lack of exercise and unhealthy diet and involves a plaque fixture to the inside of the arteries walls. Now this restricts blood flow and in turn oxygen content to the tissues and can lead to further diseases such as coronary heart disease or as talked about earlier, heart attacks. Now, the symptoms are determined by oxygen demand of the patient, and this is why it is coined the term exertional angina. Because when the body needs more oxygen through exertion, it cannot attain this because the blockage restricts blood flow. Now we reach unstable angina, or crescendo. This is much less common, but much more dangerous, with about 10 to 20% leading to heart attacks. This is also attributed, like stable angina, to poor health choices but the plaque inside the arteries are semi-fixed, which means they can move and allow blood clots to form on top. This can in turn cause a thrombosis, which involves severe oxygen reduction to the tissues. This can occur at any time, and that is why it's called unstable, because it must be treated immediately. Now we reach vasospastic or Prinz metal angina. This is part of an unstable angina, and involves the constriction of artery by vasospasm. This can occur at any time or any place, and in fact, mostly occurs in the early morning of the hours when the patient is asleep. This is usually attributed to a genetic disposition, but can also occur through substances and pharmaceutical drugs and even illegal, illicit drugs. Now, this involves a dramatic, like all unstable anginas, a reduction in blood flow, but can only be treated with drugs like vasodilators, e.g. nitrates. The main treatment for stable and unstable angina are balloon angioplasties. These involve long thin catheters in, uh, injected into the body and they are, uh, find the blockage and inflate the balloon at the end of the cat catheter. This balloon is then deflated but on the outside of the balloon remains a metal stent or a mesh wiring. Once the balloon is deflated, the mesh wiring remains, keeping the arteries walls expanded. Now, this is an old treatment, decades old in fact, but there is a new technology in the material of the stent. And now old treatments would involve just normal metals, which would cause a uh, scar tissue to form, which could swell up and block the artery again. But this new technology prevents scar tissue from forming and makes a much more successful procedure. This final technology is cardiac shockwave therapy. Now, this is non-invasive and a safe treatment, and recent studies have shown extremely promising results in the growth of heart tissue. Now, this is not like other shockwave therapies. This involves long energy, low energy acoustic waves and they stimulate growth within the heart and it allows capillaries and arteries to bypass the uh, blockages that form earlier. This is a safe procedure that allows the body to remove its own problem. Now this healthy, now the ultimate preventative factor is healthy lifestyle with fish, fruit and vegetables allowing good cholesterol to build and bad cholesterol to go away. It allows normal heart regulation and as well as uh, exercise being directly correlated to angina, this can uh, issue this can stop issues occurring years after treatment with increased levels of fitness.
Thank you.